Well, we've made it happen, boys. Are we live? We're live. Finally, I sprung it on it's you. happening to me right <sighs> in front of my face. And I feel like this is a good time for a therapy session. I feel like that's... Let a, it all out, Chad. That's a really good lounging setup for a podcast. How good is the angle of my feet that the people at home are getting? Uh, your feet are just out of this. That's of the, of actually the shot. perfect. So you're actually <laughs> just fucking teasing. Don't all give the them little, nothing for free. Yeah, all those little foot fetishes. I don't know there. if people want to see the bottom of feet. They look good. They look clean. There's definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Did just have a shower. So. Sorry, I'm very hungover. Hungover <laughs> <laughs> in Saudi Arabia. One of the things which uh, I think is almost an impossibility, Jason. I don't know. If you try really hard. Not from what we saw last season. Oh, yeah. Well, this can't go up, can it? It just goes. Oh, yeah. Right. Do you want it? We can swap microphones. No, it's all good. This one, this one can go up. I just pointed it. You know, your your okay. one can't go up, Jason. No, it has some troubles. That's one of the sponsors I want for the show. Viagra. Blues Chews. <laughs> Is that a real thing? I think so. <laughs> That's fucking next level. Yeah. You want to hear how it's called? One of those uh, <laughs> in Serbia. Yes, I, actually, I do. Actually, <laughs> like, is this a translation into English? Yeah, just okay. straight up. This is the name of it. Okay, African plum, African, African plum, plum. <laughs> ripe and ready to sure. go. I Does think in the states we have one called like the Spanish fly. It's not like a Viagra. It's like an aphrodisiac. Isn't that like? Uh, I think it's one of those like shitty pills you get at a gas station, bro. I think that's like what rhino like dick pills. I think yeah. that's like what. I could be mistaken. I don't think I am. You put in people's drinks. Like Rufy, that yeah. <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> no, it's not. I don't. I don't, I don't think it's a Rufy. Uh, yeah. I think in Serbia that's the name of it. This Spanish conversation's fly. taking Spanish a turn. <laughs> that How do we get into Rufy? or a mosquito <laughs> that gives you malaria, something like that. Maybe you were Rufy. That's why you're hungover. I know. Maybe <laughs> by Dinko. Like it, it's yeah. just uh, dude by something. There's these fucking. It's back to the hotel 3 a.m. a couple nights back, like 1.45, 2 a.m. last night. I'm just fucking... But that's nuts. when Riyadh's popping off, Jason. They are now I know, the it's like the, the prime social hours in Riyadh. Yeah. Uh, um, is like they are actually out until like 3 in the morning. I was talking to... Um, I told you guys Semler's here, and I was talking to him, and he mentioned that with the crew that he's working with, they... Um, they were like going out for like tea at like two thirty in the morning. Tea? Yeah, they would okay. just go like sit at like a porch and just drink tea. Party from like, tea from like one thirty to like three in the morning. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. I was having a great time. I was smoking shisha last night, watching the game downstairs. They put it on the big TV. Must be nice, Jason. I couldn't, he- you know, th- th- there was no sound. There it's was fun. nice. There was nice Arabic music, so it was great. It wasn't my best work. I was. I, I was actually. There was that one dude in the crowd that you obviously didn't hear who was shouting <laughs> out about how much he loves chicken. Oh yeah! Throughout the entire series, I love just like chicken. whenever there was silence, you just, I love chicken, and then like it would just be a silence again. Five minutes later, it goes chicken. <laughs> and I was Wait. just, I was broken during the cast. I was just crying. And they weren't up. even playing Inferno. No, it was just chicken. Every okay. every silence was just well, that's something fair about enough. chicken. Chicken's pretty good. Yeah, Very chicken is solid protein. Yeah, yeah. Have it a bunch of different ways. Fry it up. Put it in the oven. Oh. Air of course, fryer, what you're eating for fry. the most part is not real chicken, or at least not as god intended them to be no the chickens these days are a little bit more genetically enhanced they're mutant chickens mm-hmm. i thought you were going to talk about my back-to-back shake shacks good for you Ali- shake shacks not open when i have a chance to i'm eat. i'm oh, jealous it's closed during the day oh but i got mcdonald's alex and i are doing the uh i don't even <laughs> i don't know if alex has breakfast i have breakfast at least and then we go in and we cast and we don't eat all day and then we go and have Shake Shack after. That's real healthy for you. That's God tier. I wish I could do that. It's what I do. Well, I'll I do have one thing. meal a day and it's going to be Shake Shack. <laughs> That's yeah, right. your body's loving no that. No fries, no fries. Just the burger. I'm on the one meal a day train as well right now. That, Sometimes you, you've been for the last 10 years. Yeah, it's true. I have, I, I'm not a big eater for some reason. <laughs> Yanko and I got stooged the other day at the hotel restaurant. Oh, so you bro. missed the first time we went there. But the first time we went there, it was great. We were there with like Dinko and Alex. Tracy the Asian there. restaurant, right? That yeah. wasn't the great part. The great part was the food. The food was really good. The food right? was really like, good. I had, the, yeah. I had it the next night. Oh, okay. Well, the next night when we went to go, we got fucking stitched up, mate. We walked in and they're like, oh, yeah, we're doing the buffet today every Wednesday. And I was like, okay, cool. But can we order off the regular menu? And she was like, nah, you can't. And I was like, <sighs> I looked at Yanko. We were already, so hungry. It's like, oh, let's just eat. So we fucking we had it right, and the the men the stuff that you could get them cooking fresh was all right, but anything else that was in the buffet was pretty fucking mid. Yeah. And not only that, Trace had the the wagyu steak the night before, 
right? And his meal would have cost, I don't know, 70 euros, 90 euros, something like that. 70, 60, 70, yeah. The buffet cost us more than that and it was dog shit. Really? Yeah. More than a Wagyu steak. I yeah. don't know how that, how they compute that. And yeah. also we heard, oh, this is the worst part. So the next day we hear that Trace and Alex went before we did. And they had the same thing, but they just kept repeating that they want to order off the menu. So eventually they were able to. <laughs> <laughs> and just order what they wanted it's and they so brought sad. it out and they paid for it. Oh, that yeah, that's depressing. Yeah. That's so feel a bit of a stitch out there. But uh, look, it could be worse. It could be worse. It could always be worse. It could be yeah. worse. It could be cold pizza and warm Pepsi. It's yeah. Classic. Oh, that, no. It's a classic meal. No, there's nothing <laughs> That's worse. the Starlighter meal. That's the Starlighter That's the Star special. special. <laughs> <laughs> or the, or the three-hour late sushi if you're... So oh, yeah, the Duncan. sushi that's put out at, like, breakfast, brunch, and you go out at dinner, and you're like, oh, it's sweating. It's yeah, <laughs> that, that ain't for me. No, the, the salmon coming back alive, yeah. Uh, look, I think we need to start with a couple of key things here today, gentlemen. <laughs> okay, uh, we haven't hit all the important ones yet. No, yeah, we're not even close. Uh, obviously, we all know Rops is only playing bad because he bought his dream car. Uh, yeah. So, look, if we really need to you know, work out which one of the three of us he's going to give the Porsche to. Uh, I, I can't really drive in Malta because the roads are dog shit, so I'll take myself out of the race. I'll take it. I hear it's great for kids. Yeah, I think Jason has that midlife crisis coming up soon <laughs> enough. You know, I'm not I'm not there yet myself. Uh, what's the difference, Jason, between us? Five years? Yeah, something like that. So yeah, yeah. you so, just you're looking into the future. Right yeah. Now. So right now it's it's uh, good enough for uh, for Jason. You can't go wait till the next prodigy comes along and buys a Lamborghini. Uh, sure. Yeah, we'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. we'll give you the well, Donk when Donk starts buying cars. You can have that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Donk's ever going to learn how to drive, do you? I can't imagine he would. Yeah, why, he'll why just would have you? people fucking driving him say, around. He's going to have a driver from like his little village in Siberia. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I see that online. People are like, oh, Rob sucks now because he bought his dream car. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, that's a lesson for you kids out there. You know, you always need something to strive for. Yeah. You always need a dream, Jason. Yeah, you do. You know, you always need to be chasing something. And once you Otherwise, if you're not chasing something, you're standing still. Well, and you that's could not how you become so a billionaire. Deep, so deep. <laughs> you could also be getting chased by something. That's true. Yeah, if you're in the desert. Well, does it have to be the desert? <laughs> you know, by a leopard or panther well, I, or. I think I they're more in like a desert a jungle <laughs> or something. Yeah, okay. <laughs> or a lion, there motherfuckers. We there we go. Sorry, lion. like. <laughs> fucking ecologists over here <laughs> biologists whatever the fuck it is good thing jason couldn't fucking tie his shoelaces oh, when he left his room but he's giving me lessons about animals now <laughs> yeah, I, was, yeah, I, was I was just thinking jungle book when you were talking about those initial animals so. i wouldn't even be here if Yanko didn't give me a wake-up call well i was dead to the world now yeah. you get to be up early and well you get to go to bed early tonight if you desire there's no chance no i don't I don't get to go to bed early. Why? I'm, I'm going out into the desert to get chased by panthers and pumas and shit with OJ. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm uh, recording something for OJ's company. They do. They have like a, a series that they've been they've been doing. Uh, and we're going into the desert. I'm leaving the hotel, picked up at midnight. Uh, what is wrong with you? To go out, uh, get there at like two thirty uh, to the edge of the world, and then film during like dawn and sunrise oh, and the then, literal end edge of the world you yeah. flat earth motherfucker and then come back to the hotel around like get back to the hotel around 10 a.m so <laughs> <What>? <laughs> why you know what's the best part chad he was telling us like yo i'm doing this thing with oj guys you should come like but you just need to you just need to organize like your own transport and shit but we can come all hang out together at the edge of the world it's gonna be beautiful uh, but i got a cast tomorrow yeah, yeah but too. not till like 9 p.m. Yeah, but there's, for me, Jason, I don't have to travel 24 hours back across the other way of the That's world. True. I got to get on a five-hour flight to Rome and then a one-and-a-half-hour flight to Malta, and I'll be home by 4.30 p.m. Monday. I don't want to fuck my sleeping schedule. You're going to be home at 4.30 on Monday? Oh, I'll yeah, be home baby. I'll be before that. I won't, be... even, I won't even leave until midnight on Monday. <laughs> Y'all can fucking blow me. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> maybe you should read your emails a uh, little bit better jason no they they won't let me they don't want me to have like a because there's there's only the airline i'm on only has flights at 2 2 a.m or 2 30 and then midnight on monday there's nothing in between and they're they were worried that the final would go later that you're not on that i wouldn't be able to make that flight yeah the final that i'm not working <laughs> why don't you just and I, you do is it with your preferred airline it is i'm gonna call them and try and get it switched because in my head i'm like i know they're not gonna ask me to do anything 
And if they do... Well, certainly not when the game starts. Yeah. The game starts at 9 p.m. I know. So, so let's say worse. And the reason that we've had all of these delays is the fact that every game has been a stage game. So they have to allow for 40 minutes it's setup It's 45 time. minutes between games. It's fucking it? insane. But I understand why. Because the players are going to go, oh, we want to be set up properly. We want to warm up. Like, I get it from the player perspective. But from the viewer perspective and from, from us between matches, it's just this fucking massive void of time. Yeah. I mean, it's not too bad. It doesn't feel like... It, because that's what we get at you know all the other events too. The only difference is there's two best of threes a day. So I think it, it so was the, the day... best of one day because when Alex and I did four best. Okay, of that ones, one was. That took like seven hours. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was even weird. That was because, yeah. but that's because all the breaks in between and you have more matches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so more, so more, more, swap. more swaps. Yeah. yeah, it's multiple things. As long as I we had that. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, I'm just gonna say. Oh, was, here we go. I was so mad on day one. One of the teams forgot to um, print their notes for the players to have next to them while they play, and then the printer at on location was broken or like didn't. Work. Well, I think the problem was they they the team said it's not working at here at the hotel, and they told them it's fine. We'll just do it at the venue, and then they came to the venue and it wasn't working. Okay, that potentially makes sense, but still, that that pisses me off. Well, that, that makes it more reasonable, but yeah, it still yeah. makes me angry, and I don't even care that it's reasonable. And there's no real alternative. You know what's the worst thing? It happened for your game, but it happened to the team that was playing the first game as well. Oh, yeah. So it just wasn't delayed as much. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that was that was tilting to me on day one. Yeah. But I got over it. Yeah, okay. And uh, here we are. Hung yeah, we can tell. On day four. <laughs> <laughs> over on day four. Yeah. <laughs> Feels great. It actually does feel like a hangover. It's just there's no booze. I don't, I don't even have the fun of the hangover. You're delirious. Yeah. We had a non-alcoholic beer, Jason. We did. A couple of nights ago. That was a celebration. So all the carbs, none of the fun. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That seems to be the theme of my week right now. <laughs> yeah. All, all the, the pain, carbs. none of the fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you've had some good games, the G2 Spirit yeah, game. Yeah, we've had really good games, fortunately. Yeah, even the Navi phase game last night was fun. The comebacks yeah. from phase, a little bit of overtime on Nuke. I was like, I was sat there at like, it was like uh, uh, go, getting so late after midnight in that second map, pissed around second half and like, Navi just breaks him open on the upper bomb site, and I was like, in the, I was casting, I was like fist bumping, I was like, yeah, get me the fuck out of here. <laughs> I was like, I'm so tired. Yes. <laughs> and then Rain gets those four kills, and I was like, no, no, Rain, please. No mercy. Yeah. I don't know, man. Phase is just something's just not Off. great. Yeah. yeah. They're just not. They're not playing as good individually. You know, we talked about drops. I mean, we me memed around it a little bit, but. It's a fact that this year he hasn't been on the level that we've seen him. That he has been from that, 2016 yeah, to 2023. That, that, that we are accustomed to. <laughs> he doesn't to. like the game. Yeah. That's one of the reasons. It doesn't yeah. suit him as much because it's all about, you know, he's all about clearing every angle, playing like really slow and everything. Yeah. And it just isn't as powerful in CS2 as it was in, in Go. And then you look on top of that, I think maybe that's the underlying reason that they are fucking up some like quote unquote easy situations in game i mean even the pistol round you talked about rain gets all these kills it's him and rops in the end in the 2v1 and rain is going first with like 100 hp or he had a lot of hp and rops was red like why doesn't rops go first to just get traded get yeah. traded right and find the info you know even the the second to last round kerrigan gets two kills in lobby right they're 5v3 yeah. Oh, yeah, um, they, lose that round they have Robson and Brocky close ramp. Okay, Rain dies outside. Can I don't you know whether he? I don't think he was like too over. You know he, he can't just be hiding. He just got off here, yeah. right? So Kerrigan then goes down vents because he's thinking I killed two guys lobby. They're probably trying to react on yard, and then it's just weird. Like Ima just went straight uh, yard to heaven, really, and they didn't push lobby immediately. And then Frozen got caught by him, and they end up losing the round. It's like such a bad round for a team like FaZe to lose, where they have, you know, all veteran players, guys who understand the game. And we saw a couple of those across the series, you know, like... It's just it's weird seeing them have these struggles after, like, they started CS2 so good. They made, like, every single fucking finals. Yeah, but it, what, one of the things that happens with that is, right, is is everybody is, is learning the game at that time, right, and getting acclimatized. The game's gone through quite a few updates in that time, too. Yeah. So there's a lot of factors that play into it, but the, the key one, if, when you look at FaZe, is the ROPS drop-off. Like I said, he doesn't like the game. Like, you talk to him, and I said to him, I did the lobby, and I, and I asked him, you know, oh, jokingly, 
I, it wasn't jokingly in the sense that I didn't think he would have a list of things that he's not happy with with CS2. But I said, oh, like, what's your top three? And he literally pulled out his phone and he had a list of things on his phone. And it was more than fucking three, I tell you that much. And like, he's not happy with the format, a lot of the little issues with the game overall. Um, so, yeah, he like so Subtick was one of the things he mentioned. He's, he's I think, a bit disenchanted by all of it. And I said, oh, like, he's still talking with Valve. And he said, oh, yeah, but they don't reply to me anymore. So, you know, like, he's he's really not uh, not having a good time from that angle. And then on top of that, I think there's also the team element in the sense that Frozen's come in. And I think Frozen, I've mentioned this a couple of times, I think him and Rops have quite a few overlaps in terms of being the closer, right? Whereas before with Twist, if you would look what he would do, he would, he would facilitate Rops. He'd be a facilitator. And then he would have his own impact rounds. Um, whereas I don't think, especially with how positions have changed on certain maps with Rain and Frozen and, and this, that, and the other, I think it's multiple things that are going on with the team. It's not just one issue. Yeah. Right? But when I'm sitting there and I'm watching Mirage and Carrigan's getting entry kills and it's like feels like an <laughs> in-game leader battle with Alexi and Carrigan top of the scoreboard, I'm like, well, th this is obviously not going to work. Like, yeah. it, It's great if they can win a game with Carrigan top of the scoreboard. Yeah. Great for Finn. But he's the leader and he knows more than... That's not the recipe to consistent success for FaZe, right? And Rops is meant to be the star rifler of the team, right? That's that's how it's meant to go. So they're obviously lacking the firepower at the moment of a team that is is very firepower driven. So I, I saw some tweet. I, I don't... This was, this was like mental to me, but I haven't had time to like actually think about it. But someone someone said like he has like 56 opening kills and like 800 some rounds played. Like he's just like never, Rops. yeah, <laughs> he's just like never involved in the early going of rounds. Yeah, I think I haven't the, like looked into it at all, so I don't, I don't know how accurate it is or like what the context might be, but that's still like a crazy, crazy disparity. I, I just, I like Rops is obviously more active on the CT side, right? Yeah. Let's think of maps like Inferno, for example, but on the T side, yeah, you're not going to be expecting him going in. The whole DNA of phase is Carrigan or Rain run in and make some space, and then the rest of them hopefully are able to close rounds off of that. Nuke as well. I mean, even yesterday, you saw him a couple of times just try to. Walk through the smoke. Yeah, on his own. He's really, really flipping with, some coins. Yeah. You know, it's like kind of wow. This is, this is really brave, <laughs> Robs. Um, but it's funny, it like you see, out. you see other teams do that too. Like I saw, like well, you got to uh, take your timings for sure. But yeah. yeah. I just seen like others, other teams risk it and like it, it pans out. I'm sure like Rops is wa watching that and he's like, "What the fuck? Why doesn't this work for me?" I don't know. It just felt a little bit forced. I yeah. think he did it more than once and he didn't work the first time, well, which is like sure you can say, "Oh, okay, they punished me. They won't expect me to go for it again." But also, I mean, I was watching. I was seeing with Nico and he said a thing, which is like you can talk about it both ways. So what happened in the game actually was, Phase is winning rounds on CT side, right? But mostly playing default, and then they try to change it up to be more aggressive they're aggressive yard one round they lose the round they do the ramp the robs does the ramp thing or something along those lines and they lose another round so he said something like you know did we make this mistake as well sometimes it's like we're just or it maybe happened in or he said that had the same thing happened in the phase navi game at the major or somewhere else um uh, where it's like you know you're winning rounds just by doing default and then you change it like for why don't you why do you change it if it's working, and then I said, obviously, I mean, it's a two-edged sword, right? Yeah, if you don't You're also it, thinking they will do adapt, something, yeah, so you're yeah. trying to change the pace to, to surprise them and make it work. And he just said, yeah, but on Nuke, you don't really need to do that compared to, like, uh, Inferno or a Mirage. Sure. It's like you can just keep playing what you're doing until they figure it out or until, you know, they win a round or something like that. So Yeah. And now, like, I know probably Rops individually is in that, like, self-fulfilling deep pit of hell where it's just like loss yeah, of confidence do, makes yeah. it even worse fuck and, this yeah, game yeah and then you just you just can't get back into your groove i'm not i don't i don't think i feel like in my head i'm not super concerned like rops is a player i expect to bounce back at some point it's first event of the season as well and one of the things that they're talking about is trying to avoid that burnout that they had last season yeah which came with the major being more in the middle right so i think the thing is it's the the way that the you, you're looking for issues that you can diagnose with the teams right and go is this something that we were seeing before and it hasn't gotten better or is this saying that okay they just had an off event individually and they can you know have a good individual event for the next one like vitality is another one that falls into the same conversation right and it feels like they still have some of the same problems when i was casting the game yesterday one thing i noticed was it didn't feel like they were as all in to win rounds it felt like they were you know playing a bit more 
uh, standard CS and they didn't just have to go for these all-in pushes to win the CT rounds or whatever and they didn't have to worry about, oh, or it didn't feel like they were as concerned with playing out the mid-rounds. But then as the game went on, they obviously capitulated come second half map two and then it all just fucking fell yeah. apart and they just got booked. And I was like, well, I don't know. Well, I think the reason for that is also they lost every single pistol round. Doesn't help, yeah. So <laughs> it's harder to do. No, it's harder to do that when you're, you know, all four down, all yeah. five, all three down uh, to, to call an aggressive play because if it doesn't work out, then you're five zero down or seven zero down or whatever it is. But yeah, I think for phase just to end, I guess, is one of the most difficult ones because like you said, that, that one's tough to diagnose, right? They're not playing bad CS. Like what they're trying to do on maps, it's fine. It just feels like they are missing, you know, 5%, well, now maybe even 10% from, from some of the players at different times <clears throat> to really have better results because you look at it, it was like second place, second place, second place, and then it was, well, not even that, right? And that's tough to... You can't really you you can't really do stuff as a team to make up for that, right? Yeah. Like to make things more set because the players aren't taking as much initiative. Like that's what Vitality has to do. That's not a great answer. You just kind of have to work through it. Right? Yeah, and yeah. the players sort sort of hope that the players find that extra five percent that can put you on top. Yeah, I don't I don't know. This is the, one of the problems because we have people as soon as these results happen first tournament of the season, you see all the overreaction in favor of G2, right? And it's like, well, this is the honeymoon period, but they've played like they beat Spirit. So, if you just look at it from the confines of this tournament, so far the games that they've won, I know that we said on day 1 that there wasn't any upsets, but the the thing is you would have Mongols G2 pretty damn close, yeah. right? Yeah. You you wouldn't have one or the other as a massive favorite for multiple reasons. But G2 on their first event, you can see there's a lot of things that are working in terms of, uh, I want to say the mood in the team is, is yeah. a big one, I think, for G2, right? Because people can... The vibes. Yeah. yeah, which is a meme, but at the same time, it's real. It's like, weird they have those vibes without Stewie in the roster. Or Nexo. <laughs> 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 but they're flashing for each other and stuff and they're doing things together like it's not individual crowbar type plays or anything and it's good to see and a win over spirit is massive for the confidence so if and now that they get an opportunity against vp which i think would be a tough game today um yeah, yeah. It, like, I, I think it'd be a tough game today for sure but if they get through that and they make it to the final then you start the honeymoon in the best way possible and then you might be able to carry those vibes through for the start of the season, right? G2 boot camp, right, before this? They did, like... Yeah, week. but, yeah, like, they had six days of practice. Yeah. There's in Serbia, right? Yeah. Yeah. But um, I think it's just... The the thing is, they don't need... They didn't need to have this good of a start. But you it definitely want to avoid just losing immediately. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Because you're, you're still going to say, fuck it, it's just our first event, you right. know... Unless we'll, you we'll, win. we'll keep it moving. Keep, yeah, unless keep, you win. Keep practicing, right? But even now, no matter what, even if they lose today to VP, they can say, okay, you know. On the right path. On we the right some path. Good things, exactly. And works. I think we got some answers for how they're going to set stuff up within the team. We can see that, you know, as was known, that Malves is going to take these anchor roles on CT side, but he still gets to do cool stuff on the T side. Yeah, that's where Hunter that's the trade up, and that's where Hunter <laughs> took a step back. It's like you know, okay, you keep your CT side, the other guy gets the T side, yeah. and you both have to compromise a bit. And uh, it seems good; it looks good because Malbs has been like having good good impact, e good yeah. impact on, on that T side in the game against oh, Mons goals the final final now. round with the saved AK right where they closed it out against Spirit. He had good moments throughout and i just like you know he has this sort of a fearlessness about him just when it comes to taking duels yeah. and making plays um you know which is exactly what g2 needed uh, i think on the ct side obviously he's gonna need time to understand that it's you know he's an aggressive player by nature and yeah. likes to fight and all that stuff but as an anchor you just can't allow yourself to do that in some situations. I think he'll be fine in the, in the anchor position. He'll, he'll figure it out. He'll work. Yeah, it out, yeah, yeah. Just the, the problem is though, you 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 had Nexa before who would be the opposite. Yeah. Who would play for survivability, yeah. and now you have Malbs who, as soon as he spots them, is probably going to re swing. Fighting. Right. Yeah, yeah. So as soon as he finds the balance between which is a good scenario to do one or the other, then he can be a weapon because yeah, you exactly. don't want him to lose the ability to swing and take those fights because if he does and it, it's with a flash or with a teammate rotating in and then he gets the double. That's what you want from the anchor. Yep. Um, and he's going to need to find those timings where he needs to be a bit more passive and play the tighter lines and catch them off guard. And So 
I, look, he's a talented player. I think that's that's the key. So over time with growth, as long as he doesn't get beaten down, you know, which yeah. you know we'll have to wait and see what happens. Uh, he he should be able to grow. So yeah, I, I I don't think there's any qualms with Malbs in the team. The snack stuff is is the one that I'm looking at more, but that's going to be a long term development as opposed to a short term. <laughs> Also, like, I don't know, I think it'd be easier, it's easy at the moment to be like, oh, the Snacks thing is working out because they called, like, a, a he called a pretty cool game against Spirit with, like, the, he just worked him on the map with, like, the three A execs, like, the constant mid control, but it's also, like, you also had a game where Mobs was getting you, like, a double kill in the middle every single round. Like, I want to see Snacks call them to a win, not just, like, capitalize on an individual being incredible and making it easier for him, you but know? this is what helps in the honeymoon, right? Is yeah. everybody will be contributing and on their best behavior. Yeah. So that that's one of the honeymoon boons to any team is you know as the leader you're going to be getting the comms that you want. You're going to be getting the ideas. The problem is when it gets to the pressure games or after you've been whacked on the nose with a newspaper and had some tough losses where people shrink or they start not comming properly or they know they don't have ideas because they're scared or whatever. And then, yeah, what you're saying, he has to be able to dig them out with a good call. At the moment, everything is as good as it could possibly be from a mood perspective because yeah. the residual nature of the disliking of each other or getting shitty with a guy because he didn't do this or didn't calm that, like what we see with the and complexity, for example, yeah. uh, that doesn't exist yet with this team. But it will start. Yeah, it'll start. I it mean, always starts. Yeah, because like right now all the players are like, oh yeah, new player, new in-game leader, give him some time, he's working it out, and maybe like a month or two from now it's going to be like uh it'll be like fuck this this call is shit like why are we calling why are we playing this kind of a t side like why like we just got destroyed this game like why are we playing this kind yeah. of counter strike and you know it changes the, the perspective of the players changes yeah i think you can tell their inferno is going to fall off <laughs> oh, yeah. definitely at least a little bit i mean <clears throat> on both the t and ct side they were struggling with the approaching banana um, a little bit in control but when i uh talked to them uh, after the game you know, they were saying they were all also messing a lot of stuff up. Like, you know, Snacks called something, two guys asked, what am I doing in this yeah. round? Two guys missed their nades, right? Yeah. So there was like some now. chaos in there as well. Which but is, again, you can laugh yourself through that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Get, you get to like yeah, a but, major which and that is, It's, it's <laughs> fine that it happens now. It's not fine that if it would happen like two months from now. But um, yeah, uh, it's it's looked good so far for G2. In this tournament, uh, I think a big reason for that as well is that Nico has been sick. No, he so owned far. Donk on Nuke. I know. Yeah. That's two games in a row now where he's just like spanked Donk in a, in a series. But he's had a great tournament and it looks a little bit more like old Nico. Yeah. Um, and if that can stay the case, I mean, they beat Spirit with uh, Monesi being the lowest rated player on the team. Imagine someone told you this like two weeks ago. Nico knocked him out of his game on Nuke. He was, he was gone on Ancient. You yeah. could see by the end of it, like he wasn't even getting like angry or frustrated when he died. He was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the day I'm having. Just got to accept it. Yeah, I think Hunter as well has had a bit of resurgence in impact. So I think that's important. I think that it's, it helps that he has mobs now being like that aggressor to like create those opportunities for him. Well, take puts less pressure on him. Yeah, to like make a play too early in the round. Like Hunter gets to pick his timings a little bit more now. Yeah, well, I, th I think the thing is with Hunter before in the with Nexa, he was the active look, right? Yeah. Like, so you knew that Nexa was just going to kind of sit still a bit more of a statue. The thing is, uh, when you have teams, you saw it yesterday with um, Vitality and VP. Hello, Jason. Time Sorry, to yeah, that's my, that's wakey, my wakey. alarm wake up at 12.30 in the oh, afternoon. That's understandable. Yeah. Uh, was they were so ready for Sphinx lurks. Like they were always, okay, yeah, he's he's flanking. He'll be like, oh, they're in the site. We haven't seen Sphinx yet. Someone please watch behind. And they booked him a couple of times. And I think that's one of the problems that happens when a team really runs by their identity for every round, right? You need to be able to be a little bit more flexible with that. You know, your lurk needs to pick different timings or maybe some rounds he actually needs to go with the team and you, you can try and mix. So at the moment, that's another factor that we have to talk about with G2 is the unknown factor. People can speculate on where these players are and right. have a good idea what the play style is going to be, but there's little differences in the timings that they're going to be doing. So that's another thing that pays in their favor. This isn't to detract from them because again, we're looking in the, the micro of this tournament and they've only played two best of threes, right? Yeah. Because of the format, we haven't seen a lot of games for anybody really. Uh, but then you can look at the bigger picture of how this story is going to continue down the path and you have to take these into consideration because it would be unfair not to, right? It's like, who are the teams who did have boot camps? FaZe didn't have a boot camp. Vitality didn't have a boot camp. G2 did, like a short one. We know Furia did. Furia did. Uh, Maus did. They were in Hamburg at the new facility. Na'Vi did. They were in Spain together for some time. 
Wow, I'm shocked the teams pain. that have boot camped have actually looked the best at this tournament. Funny so that, it's isn't fucking it? weird. But also, start of the season. <laughs> Crazy. Right? So, start of the season, I've, this is the thing. If you're some of these teams, this is how I could mentally structure it. There's multiple ways that you could do it, but let's just say we're one of these teams who didn't boot camp. You just did online practice. You came here. You play your first LAN tournament. You get some reps under your belt. You go into blast groups next week. It's, it's low stakes. It's about as low as the stakes could get, and you're going to have quite a few games. So you can get some practice in there. Because now that you... Th that's the biggest issue about getting knocked out here is your practice is going to be shit for the rest of the time that you're in Saudi Arabia. Because, you know, obviously you can't play against the European teams. And if... like, Are teams heading over early when they get knocked out? Do I don't think so. Because I know... Uh, yeah, I don't think some travels... Ca I don't, I don't some ca can because they have obligations like signing yeah. sessions and stuff. Yeah, I, th I think I saw uh, some of the FlyQuest guys today at breakfast. And the thing is... It's better for them to hang around because they're going to your space afterwards anyway than going yeah. back to Oz. Um, but yeah, so then you go into blast groups and you use the blast groups as a bit more of your like boot camp yeah. going into Cologne. So that that's the thing because Cologne is the first peak that you're looking for. I know, but the problem is also to say, I, I get that, but there's a couple of problems there. First first one is that this tournament is actually a high stakes. I mean, it's 400K. 400K, for, yeah. You know? Well, it's even bigger for the orgs themselves exactly. too. Like the orgs are like... Please. But you know FaZe as an org isn't going to push the CS team. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one um, where you want to perform. I think for Fury, yeah, with the wins that they've had, I've heard from you know, they were saying about, you know, they potentially needed to go back to Brazil to play some qualifiers. But with these wins, I think they secured enough points, enough points yeah. to like not have to do that. They can just go to Malta and, and uh, prepare for the Cologne play-in. So... Nice. I think that's the problem, and for and the second one, which is actually a bigger one for me, is at the blast you still have games, you still have shit to do. You're in a prac room, yeah, right? Yeah. Like it's it's kind of different. It's not a, a a real boot camp in that sense. Yes, you're going to have days. You're going to be doing a lot of practicing and like, but it's in between matches, and those matches are going to affect you emotionally as well. Sure. Like you could be down if you're yeah. losing, if you lose a shit game, or you could just be super happy because you won, and then you don't care too much about the practice because you're winning, right? Yeah, like yeah. so, things must be going well. And for me, if you're coaching a tier one team, or if you're a tier one team, you need to boot camp before the start of every season. Why? Because players were on vacation; they haven't been playing as much CS for the most part, so they're going to be rusty. Yeah. You know, just not being around the team and everything. So you need that to get everyone slowly back into that mentality of, okay, the season is about to start. We're about to start competing. We need to be focused. We need to be concentrated. You guys need to be able to fucking control a spray and shoot people, yeah. right? Like, so you obviously play more Counter-Strike at a boot camp. Everyone's there together, so you can also work on the team atmosphere, help build that, help build the chemistry, right? And, and the boot camp doesn't have to be crazy intense, you know, but... Uh, in terms of days or in terms of how much maps you play each day, obviously it's going to depend on the team and where you are in your development. But I think it absolutely needs um, to happen. I think it just shows where, where like the different places teams were at at the end of the season. Like you said with FaZe, like so fucking burnt out. Like they did, they were even trying to like pull out of events towards the end of the last yeah. season. And like they were just like, you know what, we just we need to prioritize the break. Like mentally we need to we have that break. And then a team like VP is like, we made this cool roster change and it's not working out and we need to have some time to like actually fucking figure this shit out. Like we need to figure out how this jam and electronic thing is going to work. G2 made roster changes. We need to get these guys in a server and actually work on things. But Fury, a roster changes, new coaching staff. We need to get into a fucking boot camp and get this working. You know, like you have that different place of where these teams were all at at the end of the at the end of the break. And I don't I don't know. Maybe FaZe would have looked better if if they if they boot camp probably would have looked better if they had a boot camp before this but then maybe you're getting towards the time of the major and they're burnt out again and you don't want that to be happening yeah uh, that's what i'm interested in how they've structured their seasons but the problem is you've now just carried the baggage of last season into this season sure with the way that things you didn't have started, change the tone right? <laughs> like that's the, that's also again i put vitality in that similar conversation because if if they had gone deep in this tournament then they could have been like that's fine you know we're still but now with the way that they lost and that game didn't have the best quality of CS. It had some exciting moments to it, but there was a lot of individual, and not even plays, just like duels, right? And they were, and and to think the way that they won map one, almost going into quad OT, and then get blown out in the next two for Vitality, like the rumors went that they were looking to make roster changes throughout the break, but they were unable to stick the landing on what they were looking to pull off. So it means that they're unhappy with how things are, or at least that's what that tells me. 
So I wouldn't be putting too much stock in Vitality for this season. It doesn't mean they can't, you know, go deep in tournaments or yeah. upsets because the, this is the problem, I think, is we grade a lot of these teams by their ceiling, not what the reality is. I think the reality of Vitality is that they're sometimes just going to have these pretty fucking mid performances. Unless everybody is playing at their absolute peak, then which is not going to happen all the time, right? That's and that's that's yeah, it's fucking tough. To do you think watch that's sometimes. a symptom of the team, or do you think it's also? I, I sometimes wonder if it's also like a symptom of just the way the Counter Strike calendar works. Like we have so many events, you can't be peak at all of them. No, you should, and you shouldn't be trying to win every. Well, you should obviously go in with the intention to win every event, but some yeah. are going to mean more than others, right? Uh, and that's just the way it's going to unfold. And again, it's about making sure that for this season, you peak by the major. The major matters the most, or at least it, it should. So, how? It, but th this is it. I would love to look at the calendar of some of these top tier teams and just see how stacked it is. Where are their breaks even planned? Because I'm only well, thinking of my calendar, and my yeah. calendar has you know a few weeks here and there. There's not, you know, you have to wait until like Rio is over, really, to maybe have an opportunity, and then it depends on whether you made the fall finals or not. Yeah, mm. right. Like that's the one. It's maybe in November from mid-October to mid-November where you could have some that that there where you can you know take a couple of days off then do a like a 10-day boot camp and then your tournament is coming because what is this like we end here on Monday teams travel on the Sky Esports thing right te yeah t teams travel on Saturday to Blast yeah that's like on the 27 two. teams go to Blast then they come back then the teams that play the play-in in Cologne, have to travel on the fifth. Okay, the teams that don't play it get two extra days, so yeah, they yeah. travel on the seventh, right? Then Cologne is over. There's two weeks. Okay, so f until Group A of Pro League starts. Group there's A something and B. in between there, though, right? There's something in between. Showdown. Showdown. Yeah, so the online. Online blast so showdown. If you don't win the groups, then you have to go to showdown. Yeah. yeah. So you have to play showdown online. So I guess there it's good maybe for teams that are you know playing the C and D groups of Pro League because then they get three weeks if they break. don't play the showdown and that's where they could uh take some days off and then boot camp and then go play the groups play the playoffs of pro league and then again you know there's two weeks between that and rio only one team here is doing the <coughs> sky sports event sky sports it's mongols yeah no but, that, but that's what i mean like yeah, that yeah. that event they're not playing blast it, it's it yeah. there's only it's a tier two event i yeah. guess astralis is it is astralis at that no nope. no but it's, uh, Mongols, Eternal, Eternal Fire, Fire yeah. is there, Ents is there, Bleed is there, and those are probably yeah, so the biggest essentially teams, a tier yeah. two event. So it's going to be tough, and I don't think you can afford to really take any events off, and you need to really be strong this this season. Why? Because of next season. Because of the changes that are happening to the calendar, yeah. right? And um, oh, next season's going to be next season's going to be even. And Val, right? Valve announced it finally. Everything. So being top eight in the Valve rankings is going to mean everything everything like yeah. in a sense of you can just be invited to these main events of the tournament and and that's going to be like in that that i feel like that's going to turn into i think the start of seasons for teams is going to be really intense like that's the situation i feel like where you want to get a really good start to the season but the first event no, i think the, the end the end of the this season is yeah, the most important I, one because this season sets up how it needs to happen. The major for next will matter year. the most, though, right, in terms of the I rankings. Right, but I think when you come back into the, from these seasons, yeah. from these breaks, right, like you don't want to get into a situation where you have like one or two shit events, and then all of a sudden you're chasing everyone to try and get into the top eight, right? Like you want to well, start out hot and be in that top eight versus like trying because like if you're if you're trying to get into that top eight, you're gonna take every fucking event that comes your way. That's mm -hmm. gonna be a problem because, well, what are you going? To, how are you gonna take an event off? When that's the oh yeah exactly. the pressure yeah, right exactly like, that's what I mean okay like, we do we, it's a it's a big fucking risk in a sense okay we want to take this event off so we can practice and be better we need like we need some time off <clears throat> and then other teams are obviously playing that event yeah. they're getting points for it um, and then you go to the next event and if you flop that may mean if you were like fifth maybe you're now ninth yeah. or tenth and all of a sudden you have to play these qualifiers like close qualifiers however tos decide to run them unfortunately i think it's going to mean more online cs which is going to suck for everyone yeah i i have i need to read through the document a few more times i've already read through it a couple of times but i still don't think i'm equipped enough with a lot of the understanding as i need to be to talk about things with great authority but my initial stance is that i think i think these rules for me i don't i'm not hugely happy 
with it all. Right. Really? Yes, for a few reasons. One, I think that the system can be gamed very easily by TOs. Uh, well, let's go. Let's make that two. One, I can see the fingerprint of TOs that Valve have been talking to over some of these rules. Right, I can see how they've had their influence, which makes sense. It does make sense to talk to the TOs about this because TOs are experts in running tournaments. Valve are experts in making Counter Strike, so they have two. You know, but they, can but you give me a fingerprint? Having tier two events qualify you for tier one events. Tier two events qualify you for tier. Yeah, if you win a tier two event, yeah, you rise up the rank. You get no, you get it's not about you, the rank. You can be invited as a wild card. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So that's something that I think an ESL or a blast would want to keep enabled because of the way that, that well, for actually for blast circuit now it doesn't really matter, but for ESL circuit with say for example a DreamHack Open, uh, sorry, an ESL Challenger uh, would work as a way to get you into like the play in for a Cologne or whatever, right? Which you know, not necessarily a bad thing overall, could be seen as a good thing. I also think that uh, TOs could gain, like this is what I thought when I saw Blast stuff come out, even though I like the creativity for the bounty, um, where are the open qualifiers for the majority of the events? It's only for the 16 team event and it's four. And I think those open qualifiers are mainly regional, right? So th there's very few open qualifiers and I didn't have a big deal with losing open qualifiers for the major or the fact that I even think we're going to lose RMRs for the major and everything will just be done off rankings because what I thought Valve would do is for all of these events, 50% of the teams would be off of the ranking and 50% of the teams would have to come through open qualifiers that would then could filter into closed qualifiers and everything, right? But now that it seems like you can run events without having open qualifiers and justify qualifiers at different stages of the event, but you can invite teams based off of being lowered down in the rankings and that's still a qualifier, but not an open qualifier. It's a closed qualifier, but it's still, it's, it's fine. This is why I need to read it more because I'm still a yeah, little yeah. bit off. I feel like TOs can game it. And I think the best intention is for TOs not to do that. But I feel TOs like Blast will. I don't think PGL will, right? They don't strike, PGL don't strike me as the guys who are going to go, how can we nefariously use this so that we can just still have the best teams? No, they're like an old school TO. They're just, exactly. They just want to come in and run the events. PGL for me are like, hey, uh, if you're a Counter-Strike team and you want to play, you can come, right? Yeah. And if you're good enough, you can be here. <laughs> hey, Counter-Strike like, players. That's, yeah, that's the old way, right? Only it was out for talent. It just, I don't... <laughs> I just, I don't, I don't know how it's going to work overall. And there's also the other thing as well about um, how early they, you need to give the information of a tier one event. I think it's for one point, it's looking like it's going to be a 24 le a month yeah, lead time. Which is like for, I think it was for our four events starting in 2027. It has to have 24 months. So you would have yeah, to, yeah. if you want to run, you know, Katowice in February of 2027, you need to, say it in february next year yeah which is wild i think it feels wild and i don't know if you said this chat when we were on the drive but it's like is val gonna do that for their majors yeah i think they will are we gonna oh you think they will yeah okay that's what they were okay. going that's what they were going to pre-covid they were they oh, were yeah? planning on having the two year the two year in advance. Okay, well, if, if so they already good for have, the goose is good for the gander. I'll take that. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm with you like if if they can't follow their own rules and it's an issue um how are they going to police their own rules that's the next question is, <laughs> are they going to step in and start smacking wrists if, uh, if someone's... They just take out licenses. Them. Yeah. They just yeah, but take your license. Yeah, but even that, like, I don't know. But bro, I, like, I like, like some parts of it. Like, I like that they capped, like, the, the fucking random events and in terms of the prize money. The unranked events. Yeah, unranked yeah. events, like, can have a max of 100,000. But why, why, why do you think that's a good thing? Because they don't want to, like, for instance, they don't want whatever, I don't remember which one it was, the gambling companies coming in and running an online event for $300,000 that eclipses the prize pool of some of the 500, other big 500,000. But can't they, still just run it? can't they still just run an online gambling event? Yeah, but it's capped at 100,000 now. No, but couldn't they just make it a tier one or tier two event? If they want. So, sure. Yeah, so but then you have to announce it two years in advance and yeah, so, okay. one year in advance if it's a tier two event or okay I see from that perspective yeah, yeah okay I think so and so also who's running. gonna you know our tier one teams we're really going to be willing to play it with how packed this, the, the calendar is going to yeah. be and even with that much money if it's online it's still half of or uh, what LAN is um, in terms of the points how it um, for the ranking and, you know, if they want to make it LAN, well, then you fucking have to organize. I was going to say, is, the, is there any qualification? I didn't see anything in there about tier one events like having to be a LAN. No, in that, there's the, there, it's not. But it's to do with the rankings, right? Yeah. And the rankings is essentially, uh, it has a bunch of different criteria that helps with the scaling, so, the points, so, prize money, who you verse, et cetera. So when I read through 
read through it, and I'm with you. I have to read it once or twice more. And the, the HLTV article really helped distill some of the things down in the in the details of like the legalese speak. So, you know. Jason, if haven't you learned anything in the last you know couple of years? You need to fucking go to the source. You can't be trusting these news outlets to break it down for you. No, I read the source, and then I read the distillation. The distillation. Do okay. you like that? That's a big word. Yeah. It's pretty good. On a yacht with it. Anyways, it brought me back. Like there are some things I like, and some things I wasn't a huge fan of. But it, like I kept thinking back to the conversation that I that I had with them. I think you were there uh, in Copenhagen when we were talking to them about all this kind of stuff. And the way um, they described it was in terms of how they're organizing the scene is like it's not that we're trying to like draw like because I was asking like how much is prize money impacting the rankings like how much is all these different factors and he's like basically what we're doing is introducing levers into the system right so like if they if they want to adjust things it's not some massive change they can like tweak the levers so to speak of like where they are like yeah but it's going to be a year to two years yeah we're going to have to go through the growing pains yes but they have the ability now through multiple ways in terms of how early you have to announce the tournament? What's the cap on prize money? What's the invite cap? If if TOs start gaming the system, they can change some of the levers to mess with that way, yeah, so but they not can for take a while, away the gaming. Jason. Yeah, again, you're gonna have to go through growing pains. But they're like any other, you're still gonna go through the same issue, even if you come out with a format that we all think would be perfect for a way to structure the scene. There's still gonna be some kind of a mistake somewhere. There's oh, no way to no, organize a scene of this scale without having to tweak things as you go along. Uh, for sure, it's just the. The thing is, I, w- I was one who was like, all right, guys, no big emergency here with no open qualifiers for majors. Don't you worry. No massive emergency. And now I'm like, well... Do you feel maybe. like you got undercut a little bit? <laughs> feel like you got your legs taken out from beneath you on that it's one? Ju- like, it's just... The thing is, there needs to be the ability for ranking mobility. Like, people have to be able to move up and down. And a bunch of nobodies has to be able to be in that conversation. I'm not super concerned about, like, the top 15. It's like the top 40 teams. It's I like, w- can you get those no-namers to all of a sudden be able to be invited? Like a brand new team of five and random how long people. does that process take? Because before, look, it's I was... It's probably a couple of years. It, that's the thing. I was never a massive fan of the nobodies who came through and they spent... Everyone loves an underdog story. But the reason that I was never like super sold on the underdog story is because I'm like... Well, they're going to go into the event and maybe they get an upset or two, but then they get slammed. And it was like, I wish we just had that better team here who we knew we'd get better Counter-Strike out of, mm-hmm. right? Uh, but it's always nice to see those stories because it just does show you that, hey, anybody with the dream or the goal and the hard work or whatever can, can break through in this regard. Uh, so I just worry that it becomes something that we wanted to move away from partner leagues uh, and things being very closed to it's still just being closed, but between a broader group not a group that's selected by the tos and the orgs having a conversation but obviously well, by being good what if we try and think this out what if we say like us three grab maniac grab let's say grab machine we make a team like what's the process to try and get into the rankings we'd have to we'd have to grind some some random leagues and online events and hopefully I mean, the go pro- to some of those the, unranked the events. problem is you look at these cct tournaments they don't have qualifiers they online tournaments. They just invite, I think, all the teams. No, no. So, well, I look. But I it's know. selective, you know. Like they don't look necessarily at the ranking. They're like, okay, we like these teams. But this is where the this is where the problem. So I understand what you're bringing up here. This is where I have an issue with the way things are going to be structured now. Is because let's say the online portion of the bounty is a qualifier for the land portion, even though in my mind it's one event. But the way that you, they will use to fucking game the system of these things is the first section will be a qualifier for the second section. Yeah. Well, that's essentially what the play-ins is considered as yeah. for like a category. It's a qualifier for the main stage. For the main event, yeah. Yeah, so... so oh, okay, we can't call it a main and, event. And that's why... Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. why That's why Yanko is hedging on the fact that he thinks there'll be more online section because, look, if there's no punishment for not running that section of the tournament online, why would you fork out the cost to do it on land? Yeah, it's so much... So much more you know more teams to fly out to accommodate practice rooms for them all this shit is just it's worth it for katowice and cologne sure but for like if you look at tsl for events like dallas and rio and that sort of a thing i think i don't know their qualifiers have always been online yes but um what, but what if you whittle the you were, down you were, in you were inviting now. you were What's inviting that? more teams than you can now like i'm gonna check that right now how many teams are I guess when I'm 1.5 wh- is the multiplier isn't it No but how many teams have been invited like how many teams in Dallas were invited and how many came through the qualifier that's what like I mean at least 6 or 7 I think cuz what that what ESL would do is they would have partner teams invited 
they would have world ranking teams, which sometimes overlapped with the partner teams. Wait, I want to stay on this like uh, well, you're. Wait, I'll tell you. So, we've had out of the sixteen teams, Liquid came to the qualifier, VP qualifier, Heroic qualifier. That's three. FlyQuest, Oceania, four. 9Z South America 5 and everyone er else's invites local heroes and stuff. So 5 out of 16 so came you, through the qualifier and now it will have to be 8, eight. right? So that's the difference. Like you can invite 3 less teams and then you can just do the qualifiers for more and uh, and why would ESL is not going for those 3 teams for that difference of 3 teams to make it a LAN? They're not. It, does not. it doesn't make any sense. And also because the eight teams that are invited are going to be there based off of the ranking. So you'll get the best teams. Unless they Which use... are the ones that you are trying to get. That's why the partnership started. So you can guarantee as a TO that you'll get the world's best teams at your event. Uh, unless, unless the ESO Challenger events is, say, I qualify for Rio now. Right, so if you win ESL Challenger 342, it qualifies you. No, that's a wild card. That get, wild card doesn't get you into the top eight. It gets you into the close qualifier. No, uh, yeah, but yeah. But, all you do is you structure the tournament and you say the playoff is the main tournament and the group stage is the qualifier. Oh, okay. yeah, but... Wait, say that again? You structure it <laughs> so that the main tournament is the playoff and the group stage is the qualifier. But the playoff is what? 16 teams? No, it doesn't have to be. I think I think are you just talking are you are you taking the angle of where you can like kind of like uh use a little bit of wordplay to like Well, make look it at so... look at the rivals event that Blast are going to try and host. They said it's eight teams only, but they can't do that. So they have to run a portion of an event before the rivals event. Yeah. Okay, but that the the rivals event is just like a playoff. Sure. Yeah, but well, each team, for each them for them one for, wild card for Blast it makes sense because they want an eight team event, but ESL wants a sixteen team event. Maybe they want to get an eight team playoff, and have that as their well. Uh, if they change how they format their tournaments, but I mean that's only three games, three games. They three can, days of games. They can yeah. do that though. You get one wild card event that you can run for every three tier one events you run. Fucking and I think vernacular. there's a fingerprint right there because that's how you get to be able to do the Blast World Final. But they're missing. They're missing one. They don't do it. They don't do the Blast World. They'll Final have do. Well, right, but like that's how. That's where that would fall in, right? Where they invite eight teams uh, out to. Yeah, because also right, they're yeah. not doing enough events. You need three to hold one of those. Unless so you they count need the major. Wait. Well, they do. Well, they're new. I. I I didn't even thought about it with their new format, but I know like this year they would they would qualify for one wild card event. Yeah, but next year they don't. Next, next year, year they have bounty, whatever the other one's called, and okay. rival. Well, maybe they don't want to do a wild card event. No, they wouldn't qualify. I, I want to. I want to go there. They have eight team events. I want to are eight teams. They only have groups and showdown. That's four events. So this is what I'm saying. I need to read it some more. Yeah, yeah actually, they would qualify for one world final. But that's the problem. It's not the world final. It's the you're thinking about like world final. It's the fall and spring final that is the an eight team tournament that they're holding. You know, which is the rival event. Yes. Yeah. So they have. In, in this year, if you looked at it, they would have three rival events. The two finals and the world final. Yeah, but the way they wanted to structure the rival event was just inviting all of the teams. Yeah, the way they wanted to, which yeah. by what I understand is they can't. But maybe they can't. Because I don't fucking understand all this shit. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the other. That's the other one problem with this is it does get like a little bit complicated. We'll see. I'm tired of, of this topic. Let's go back to talking about Connor. Well, Let's I want to. I want to touch on one more thing with this. Right, we didn't actually right, answer right, the question. Right, right, I want right. to know how an unranked team that just forms gets like. How do you get into like the invited to the tier two and tier one events? Because you start out with five players. You have no ranking points whatsoever. We've never played in a tournament. You have to play shit that has open qualifiers. So like you just, what, you whatever just have to, that is, you just have to go through the qualifiers whether, for tier two. Whether events, that's ECL, tier, one tier four events, really. <laughs> yeah. You know, you have to go through ECL. But I if don't know, but some, it, some of this shit that has. But won't those all qualify as unranked events? Like the the main event, like if you go through these open qualifiers? Yeah, but eventually you get. No, well. But by nature of an unranked event, you're not actually getting any ranking points off of it. But a qualifier for a ranked event would still garner would some get you points. In. So I you just assume. have to literally. If you do well enough. You just yeah, but yeah, 
I guess you just literally have to grind until you're good enough to but win. Yeah, I mean, but bro, that's like for someone who's never played, you know, you're just starting yeah. off your career. What, do you want to go to Cologne immediately? Dude, I, no, I but this is the whole, no, but the, it's like, it's like, what is, what is the lead up to being able to get to a I Cologne, played right? a this one is the whole idea. Thing. Remember, I played that one expert thing, maybe it was last yeah, player, Yeah, you shut up the fucking, And then like I ended up in the rankings, eight yeah, eight and I was in the, I was in the Valve World <laughs> rankings, right? So, I'm sure there's ways in. Yeah, all right. I just don't know exactly how. All right. Well, like, like I said, I need to read it seven more times. I think I think there's I think there's some cool Every features day for to a it. Year. I think there's cool features to it. I think there's some weird ones to it. I think there's a lot of complication involved in it, and I think it's going to be a really hard thing to explain to the public. But maybe m the majority of the public doesn't give a fuck, and they of course just, they yeah. don't give a fuck. Yeah, they don't care. No, but like you know, it's like nice. Like when I, when I when Yango like started watching NFL, like you very much know the format of how the NFL league works. It's nice as a viewer to be able to say I know how all of this actually fucking works. But this is so, this is a little bit obscure and complicated to the point where it's like I don't even want to know this shit. I just wanted it to be like tennis. That's all I wanted. I just okay. wanted it to be like tennis. Well, it might get there. We have those levers. We'll pull them, we'll push them. Yeah, we'll dance. Pushing and pulling. Anyways, Counter Strike. Yeah. Um, Virtus Pro looked cool. Yeah, they did. I mean, also a little bit vitality was just crap. Um, but so you're not putting a lot of stock in the VP performances. I mean, again, it's no. Not I mean, listen. What I liked. So here's the thing. The eye. What did the eye test say? Uh, they had rounds, especially on Mirage early on. They were doing faster paced stuff. You know, uh, first gun round B pop, second gun round sort of an A-pop, even though they lost the rounds, like you could tell there was, it wasn't just every round default, playing slow, trying to, to end stuff, which is good. They need to have that in their playbook to be a little bit more difficult um, to read. To read. Yeah. Flit was really good. James had a great series. You know, all players had their moments. Fame, fame was a little bit iffy in some I of those I think Fame's getting roles. fucked on Mirage. Because I, I was mm. I was looking at the positions before, and uh, when I was looking at it, they've played a lot of games in a short amount of time since Electronic joined. But I feel like Fame used to be short, and then since Electronic came in, they flip flop back and forth a couple of times, mm. and he just didn't look comfortable on A. But uh, Electronic has the louder voice. I think he gets what he wants. So yeah, you know. well, and maybe a, a position where you need someone to be a little bit more vocal. Yeah, but I think Fame. No, th that's not what I mean. I mean that. Uh, you mean within the team? I mean, in electronic terms of will have priority. a sook if he doesn't get the spot. Whereas, sure. like for fame, he'll go, "I'll just fucking do it." Like, it he got exploited on a lot. And it was impressive about VP. I mean, how many times do we stand there and and say, "Oh, they just lost a quadruple over or triple overtime, and they could have won the game." And uh, you know, they're gonna fall apart on the second map, and that just doesn't happen to VP. You know, even after like a close first half where they. A rough Ma first, yeah, where they were making some gambles didn't work out, you know, the stacks and whatnot, and then they go into the second half and it's flawless. Literally. Yeah. I, I felt like I could I felt like I could I don't know if I was just making this up in my own head, but I felt like I could kind of identify and pick out really where electronic was making a call for like a finishing play in a round and Jam was still making the calls. Like you know how like they've kind of like had that thing where like electronic will obviously his vocal will step in and just make a decision and they've had that little bit of clash of philosophy. Like when I see a round where like VP has taken like on dust two, like electronic got out mid early, like made a read, got out mid early, and then everyone just kind of coalesced, came to mid. They executed a mid to B split with like a minute left in the round. Didn't faff about the map, didn't move around the map, like just just said, We have this, we have this map control, we have a really good, you know, position. Let's just fucking hit it. I feel like that's an electronic call. Yeah, it, like it could be for sure. I think James is within the interviews shown that he's more than well, wow. I don't know if happy yeah, is no, no, the word, his, but, his but little, he is willing. That little interview that came out of his podcast that he did in Russian, that it came out like like a month ago, like during the break, and I read it at the time, but I reread it before their match, and I, for whatever reason, the first time I read it, I didn't really like have the, it didn't like hit me the same. But I was reading, it, I was like, James just gave like a shit ton of fucking incredible information in this interview, mm. <laughs> like just saying things like, "Yeah, we realized immediately that we'd have to we'd have to adapt and change with electronic, like we couldn't keep playing the same way, and you know we're not the best friends in the world, and we're trying to find a way to get our theories and our the way we look." counter-strike to be on the same page and actually make it work and you know he just he gave a lot of really good info in that interview i do like how it's more of a business for that well i don't know if i like it but i i'm glad that it can exist yeah right because i don't yeah. think everything oh we all need to be mates like, i like the fact that they can actually not get along and then still try well it's not that they're not getting along just maybe not you know not hanging out friends, all the time yeah. and shit it's like we're here to play professional counter-strike yeah that, that kind of feels nice i like that in a way but i don't know today against g2 will be um a bit more telling, I suppose. Mm. I think they're going to go up for against... For both teams. Yeah, I think they're going to go up against a team who, 
look, as you mentioned before, I, it's it's not the end of the world for G2 if things don't go well in this match. But obviously, they want to put their best foot forward. So it yeah. should be a good clash. I think also VP goes up well against Vitality stylistically. You know, like for Vitality, a lot of it is making plays, being proactive, being aggressive, you know, doing stuff together um, early on, especially on the CT side. And VP is just content with sitting back and punishing that shit. So I feel like for someone like James to to make the game plan where it's like, okay, we'll take the zone and if there's an advantage or a trade, like, you know, we just wait for them to make a move, punish them and close out the round, right? And uh, f against G2, who's a little bit of both, I think the problem might be that VP understands like sort of how people think and most teams think. So they do something that doesn't really compute sometimes, but because it doesn't compute for the other team either, you know, it can work out. That can be frustrating to play against. You're just mm -hmm. thinking, wait, like they don't have any of this control and they're just blind stacking the site and deciding to play retake on the other side. For what? I mean, and that, you know, it could be that they're just playing retake on B Inferno, which is, you know, obviously tough to, to retake, but that could be something that VP is perfectly content with. And I think they have a really good on understanding of the economy in a sense that they understand that when they do it in that round... Even if they lose it, right, like they're wrong, the way their economy is, it's not a big deal. Like it's just one round on the scoreboard, but... Not a money fuck round. Yes, yeah. exactly. Like it, it, they have still a very good chance to win the next round. And even if they lose the next round, because they saved so much, they could probably buy, buy again. again yeah. And that's, some, that's where other teams start to lose track of it. And then they get surprised. Oh, shit, how do they have an op? How do they have M4s? You know, they were supposed to be on a half buy or something along those lines. And that, I remember talking to Messi when he started in-game leading for Fnatic. And they played them as Fnatic two times when they were outsiders at the Rio Major, right? And he was, like, starting to sweat when I asked. He's like, bro, it's so, it's, like, so hard. You're starting to get paranoid, you know? It's like, yeah. oh, watch out, maybe James has an op. And it's, like... <laughs> it's, it's not po It's definitely yeah, not it's, possible. It's definitely but. not possible, but... You thought that multiple times before yeah. playing them and somehow it just happened. So it makes like people more paranoid just as a team for a caller, but also individually players because you're like, if I turn this corner, yeah, I want to take this it? fight, but <laughs> I think it's a five, seven, but I don't want to run into a, an op. So just, yeah, just thinking about the veto, right? So I think we probably see G2 ban Vertigo, I, th I think. Yeah, probably against them. No one's playing new Vertigo right now. No, well, Spirit played against. RBR and Vitality played against them. M80, yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't really count it. those. I just want yeah. <laughs> so, uh, No nuke, no word to go. Yeah. So I wonder what VP pick into because they picked Mirage against Vitality and lost it. Yeah, I think they will pick Dust 2. You think? Fuck, I wouldn't want to play Dust 2 against that roster. Dust 2 or Anubis? Anubis? I wouldn't mind testing. Yeah, I think Anubis is a decent shout. Testing Malbs on A. Yeah. Give it a go. Yeah, yeah. They, and G2 hasn't played it yet. Yeah, it's not the easiest map to come together on. Could be could be definitely an Anubis. For, uh, then where does G2 ooh, that go? That Dust 2 angle is actually kind of I mean, if it's not Inferno for G2, um, if they're not like feeling as great on it, what else could it be? It could be... Ancient? Could be Ancient. Could maybe... Ah, they're not going to pick Dust 2 into VP. Mirage? Could be Mirage again. Yeah, they picked against Spirit. So it is nice to see them play Mirage, isn't it? Yeah. It's like it, the world makes sense again. Bro. <laughs> Pick it against Spirit and win it. Then win the series on the same day that Furia made it through the lower bracket with, you know, fall only. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, if, if people get if people, it, yeah. if people are giving it to you, you know, you'll take it. I couldn't believe Mongols let them have it. Yeah, between that and Inferno, like that was and super, a BO1 veto as well. Super strange. Yeah. But I think you know we talked about G2 and you know overreacting and first stages and whatnot. I think for me, um, when I watched Furia play, it's like finally there's like things make sense. Sensibility when you watch them play, yeah. like you were. Go on. Yeah, I, I think that's the problem. Like you can see, and sure, sometimes it worked and that and the T side, yes, they were winning pistols and blah blah. But you can also say, yeah, and then they lost some gun rounds where tactically they were in a good position, but someone just fucked something up, right? But for me, when I'm looking, I'm looking, I wanna see does this make sense what they're trying to do? Is there a plan behind this? How they're ending rounds, like is yeah. is this random shit that's happening on the map or or not? And it's definitely not random. And you can see Fallen's like footprint all over it. Um 
with having you know openings whatever and then playing slow with advantages uh, punishing people and still having you know uh a good idea of how you want to end rounds and then just you do it and it works or it doesn't work and with the players also uh, executing it on a on a high level uh, you know obviously they were struggling way more with city sides early on and then they had that great comeback on city side on mirage against mouse mm -hmm. so i think for furia fans finally after a long time they there can might be hope yeah they have something to look forward to and just at least uh, believe that this team with some time could do some damage. They uh, look good in those slow rounds too when they like paused it in the mid round and like, like gave people time to like maneuver around the map and try and find gaps. They actually looked like they were they were pretty well coordinated and knew what they were doing. I think it was also good that it was Nuke because that's a map where you see a lot of you know the chessboard of counter mm, being yeah. played. So uh, I think some of the things were interesting to me was you know you're talking about the Fallen's mark. I also think they kept a little bit of the DNA that they had before in the sense of something that Fury were always good at because they didn't used to do Smoke Wars Yard was how good they were at topside harass. Rather, right? they make Case it so difficult door. for the top players to like set up early and just feel comfortable. Like while you're getting to your you know trying to get to CT vent or trying to transition across. You're either mollied, you're getting spammed, you know, you're always having a fight. And that's something that they were so good at before, which they, they kept being quite good at here. But that game against Sashi, they are so fortunate that Cello won that 1v2 because I think otherwise Sashi could have pipped him at the post. It could have been like a 13 yeah. to 11 scoreline. I think that was the round that put them onto 12. And then they lost in yeah. the next round. Yeah, that was 11 11. Yeah, and that, that was. Make a wish. Like, I, I'm sitting there thinking, well, he's saved. Are you just going to take the orb? Like, and then he fucking gets those last two kills, kit in the side, bang, diffuse. Like, holy shit. They're really fortunate for that. But um, it is growth for the team, and we'll have to see. I guess uh, they had the two weeks. Skulls looked camp. way more comfortable too. Well, yeah, he gets to speak his language, bro. He was. I don't like even think it's the language. I don't. I don't honestly, I don't even think it's. I think it was just how much of a train wreck Liquid was. That it just sounds so happy, even on social media when you read these tweets. It's like he was just so happy to be like in a good spot. You know, he's happy with the type of personalities that are on the team. Uh, you know, fallen as the captain, all that stuff. Uh, see there as well. Uh, there as the head coach so you know i think hopefully you'll be able to see better performances from him in the future as what well what do you think is the ceiling of this fury team are they going to be can they be a top 10 team top 8 team i guess is the most important well yuri had he the first game they played yuri had a good game yeah, yeah. um if yuri can can find, find form that back, yeah. right then we can go back to the yuri Caserato conversation because in more recent times it's just been the Caserato conversation you need both of them right yeah. uh, and then it skulls within more of these hard anchor positions but cello for me he was sick right so i, I don't want to be overly critical but he is the one that if they're going to need consistent ability for him to open rounds, I think. Um, but, uh, you know, we only saw very few maps played from this team. So it's really hard to judge that pitch. Yeah, the ceiling overall, I don't know. They could be on the cusp of a top 10 team. Sure. Yeah. And I think also, let's say the goal for them is to obviously make it out of the play and in Cologne. They're not playing blast. So they have two weeks to just practice and boot camp and deep in the map pool. Yeah. I feel like that would be the good next step yeah right like uh, i think they would be obviously disappointed uh, not making it out of the plane it wouldn't be the end of the world but you know that's what you want you want to build on this now yeah, you want to create you want to create momentum as a team right not necessarily in terms of oh yeah and, and three months from now we're going to be winning shit just more is like okay we're, we're putting in the work and it's paying off like and so that people start believing well, they could the have player. two peaks Janko. they could try and get like a brazilian team hasn't won in brazil Imagine yeah. if they're at a good point come Rio. Oh, shit. And yeah. you consider what that means for most other teams of the high caliber there. That Fuck event all. is more... Exactly, <laughs> because they're focused on the major. For that, that would like that's actually a reasonable goal to set yourself, if you're yeah. furious, I'd say. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's plenty of time. That's three months, three months yeah. from now. Yeah, that's a that's, uh, good amount of time, especially Pro League is in Malta. That's where they're based, so they can uh, still practice a lot while they're there. So, yeah, that was another positive. Any alarm bells on Spirit? Nah. 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 No problems at all. It'll be fine. I know people want to talk about like Donk's performance. I don't think, you know. Again, first... You're, you're going to have those. Yeah, so and they, they won the last those. event of the season. Yeah. Sure, they don't get to... They also won the first event of last season as well. Uh, but, you know, look, these, these things are going to happen. Yeah. They lost to G2 with the firepower upgrade in a honeymoon period. Relatively unknown. G G2 was better on the day. The individuals were, you know, yeah. a little bit better. And the next time they meet, it could be the other way around. And Completely. So I don't think it's anything to really... No, I'm not super concerned about it. Super concerned about it. Yeah. What else yeah. is there to think about? Um, 
most of the teams that went down to the resurrection bracket, it's like well, we didn't we didn't we haven't touched a whole lot on Navi. Well, yeah. they played yesterday and beat Phase two zero, right? Uh, then before that, they played Furia, and that was two zero as well. Uh, they had a twelve zero T side on Mirage. Yeah. Yes, Nuke right. was close. It was, I think, even 13-11 for yeah. Navi, but they just... I mean, out. I think it's kind of cool seeing them. I'm wondering... I, I'm wondering... Well, I left that match last night in my head on the, on the shuttle back. I was just wondering the whole time. I was like, can they... Can you actually, if you're Navi, reframe people's perspective on the major? You know, like, because they always want to prove that... You obviously want to prove that you can do that again. They, they've said, like, this but, came way earlier than no, we but, expected. But yeah, their framing's not... Their, fr- like, their from, framing like, as a team yeah, doesn't but change. Who, who, like, that's the thing. Who gives a fuck about anybody else's framing? I don't think Navi gives a fuck about the public framing, but I just... Can you change it? Can you change but the conversation in the public? Yeah, start yeah. winning events. Yeah. Right, this but, is an event they should win, then. You know, if, if you're... That's why I said even yesterday when I was watching the game outside, I said to Nico, like... If Navi wants to be a contender, like they need, they can't lose Nuke the way it was going, right? Like yeah. Nuke, just, they had like a good economy, good lead, right? And Face starts winning some rounds and starts coming 10-5. back. Like you need to win a game like this, a map like this. Actually, if you're Navi, if you want to be in that conversation, you can't like fall apart at this point. And they did manage to to win and close it out. So props to them. And it's about now. Basically, I mean, winning the event. Who are the teams? Mouse, Mouse is probably the you know the big challenger. Yeah. You know because they've done it before and uh, they've also had plenty of time to rest and prepare for this event. And then it's you know G two and and VP on the other side of the bracket. So if you are them, Navi, you know this is the event you go out and win. <laughs> I feel Mouse are kind of doomed if they do, doomed if they don't here because it's sure that it's, there, not an is, it's a meek crowd, right? So <laughs> they're like, they're continent merchants, Chad. So. <laughs> <laughs> they're not gonna do it here they can only win events in europe <laughs> but that's the thing if they do let's say mouse do win it and they it's like well yeah it was essentially just another studio event and like, oh, it's well, like a fuck. it's like a stepping stone it's like a middle it's like it's like somewhere in between a studio event and an arena it's event. a it's a little bit it's somewhere in between pro league and Chengdu. but it would have been <laughs> yeah it would have been nice though if if they could have jumped uh into a phase game and beaten phase in that environment that, sure. yeah. because of the you know phase having them in their pocket type big brother syndrome situation yeah. so i think that would have been a nice way for them to to have the pathing but yeah going into navi now it's another game i'm sitting here thinking about the map pool right so what are we going to lose there Mao's are going to remove anubis and navi are going to remove vertigo uh so yeah I've, but Mao's map pool looks really strong when you look at it just on paper um so I, i'm just curious to see how that's going to stack yeah, ancient maybe Actually, so not Mouse ancient. No, that's what I was thinking. Mouse yeah, maybe Mouse, but Navi Nuke, maybe. Or Dust or... Two. Mouse are or undefeated that, on yeah. Dust Two, but they've only played like three times. Yeah. So yeah, I'll have to look into that one a little bit more. Just that's the, the top second of my game head. of today. Um, but I don't know. I think I think uh, you're doing that, yeah. you're right in the sense that it is uh, an event for Navi if they want to. But th- that's also the thing. In London, they were in the final, right? Yeah. So the the it's not like they've disappeared completely. They did for a little bit after the major. But they were in the yeah, final and they got schooled that. by Spirit again. Yes, like that's also the the, the thing, right? Um, but it was match up Spirit, and they and they beat who did they beat VP in the semifinal, right? And they went straight to the semis. Was it VP of Vitality? Was, was uh, yeah, because it was it was Iowa versus Donk on one side. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm pretty sure you're right. Because uh, VP beat Vitality in the group stage. Of Dude, that Bits event. playing incredible right now. Yeah, but he can, well, I was gonna say he can't be a star rifler, and then I look at it, and Jimmy in very similar positions were just fucking popping off yesterday. I'm so incredible how how good. Jimmy well, is. Navi beat Jim. Navi beat Astralis in phase in groups, two o two one, and then they were straight to semis. Then they beat VP and lost three one to Spirit. Okay. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm, but Mao's weren't in uh, spring finals, so yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think this would be a good game because I think both teams still have things to prove, even though both teams have won trophies within the first season. Yeah. Obviously, Navi's counts a little bit more than Mauser's, but Mauser were quite dominant in the victories they had. There were two um, best of fives that were three O's against Vitality and Spirit. It's an interesting like top four because all these teams have something to play for. Least of all G two probably. You know, like they're the one who would be the most fine with with capitulating in the semis. Yeah, yeah, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, obviously they don't feel like they should be that they're inferior to VP in any way, right? Like, I mean, they're going into the matchup to to smash them and they're in the tournament to lift the trophy. Um, 
but you know for mouse navi vp there's always you know for mouse it's okay back on the saddle after a longer the, break for them to yeah disappointing uh, you know prove that we can we're still that team that yeah. could lift the trophy navi that we can lift a trophy you know also outside of that one major vp that this electronic addition has elevated them into contender status right so a lot of cool storylines what's the, the most final. entertaining final I think G2 G2 Mouse, G2 right? Mouse. Yeah. Mouse. That's the most I actually I wouldn't be against G2 Navi I think it would be pretty cool. Also too. because they played a ton of time in the first season, you know, G2 beat them at the major, then Mouse beat them at in Chengdu playoffs, in Pro League playoffs and then G2 knocked them out in Dallas in last place. Yeah, that's right. With G2. Yeah, I, look uh <laughs> Yes, that Why happened, Jason. Laughing, it wasn't a fever dream. It's from G Stu to G New. I know. That's that's what we're running with at the moment. Ha oh, uh, we could touch on. Uh, well, you guys probably won't want to, but fucking complexity needs to make a change. They are. No, they need. They need to. Oh. This lineup. Yeah. Well, here's the. Here's <laughs> the. <laughs> Didn't we know that already? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apparently, everyone knows it except for complexity. But yeah. Uh, okay. Here's the thing. I also because you guys talked about like tilting or something like that, and and. Maniac was saying because Elish was visibly frustrated in the M18. Oh, I caught this on the post segment, yeah. Game, you know, and everything. And Maniac's like, you know, I understand, you know, frustrated with uh, the mistakes and whatnot, but you're just part of the problem and you start doing that. It's rich uh, coming from fucking you know, Vitality fanboy. And then I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, you know, in general, <laughs> like, guy. I understand where you're going with this, but I disagree with that. Like, what is he supposed to do at this point? Like, they've been fucking up shit like this for, you know, months and months and months like and he sh and you're just supposed to sit sometimes you you need to like and op and he was you know you're trying to work on those things and be patient and talk to me and blah 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 and obviously it hasn't worked you're still making the same mistakes so fucking lose your shit start yelling at people like then what the fuck are you doing bro like you know yeah. are you going to start playing like stop being a fucking bitch can we do this or fucking get him out of the team uh, you look, know, like there's no because complexity has the star rifler, the opper, and the in-game leader. The three most important positions they have set. They're not gonna make changes yeah. anywhere there, right? It's like the two guys that are quote unquote the easiest to replace on a team that have been the issue for them for the most part. At least when you look at some of the performances and stuff. Who who are the culprits for the chaotic communication or not talking or whatever we can't really know but at some point you know enough is enough and you need to go the other way or, or you need to do something radical to to try to jump start this nah, team nah, nah. complexity are like big that's what complexity are like they're a team who should just be happy if they're in the top 20 that's what <laughs> no seriously <laughs> Come on now. But I don't think Elise is happy about yeah, it. Yeah, and then no. if you're not happy and I have no sympathy, understand. Why don't you have sympathy? I think I think if you're if you're the standard bearer for North American Counter Strike, you can't be happy with top twenty. You have to be playing to be to be one of the best teams in the world. You have okay. to be. Let's, I hate that we get into these conversations about American Counter Strike all the time, but let's do it again. You don't have we if, don't have to. If, this is where we switch to your southern accent you're, chat. If you're a liege, if you're a liege and you want to win you're not doing it in a North American team. That's bullshit. Oh, fuck off, Jason. That's bullshit. <laughs> you can't have that mentality. Right now, <laughs> you can't have that mentality. Is that like Serato? If you want to win, you're not doing it on a Brazilian team? I look, like, at, yeah. at, well, no, how does I that mean, make you feel, Jason? At the, at the moment, they're not, uh, they're not in a position to win and do that, but the goal needs to be to get into the position where you That's can... That's the goal. They always. want Zhong yeah, yeah. Kopping, though. Look at, look at FlyQuest, Chad, they want Zhong Kopping. their goal is? Yeah, but if, again, the stated goal of, of, of complexity is to rebuild a team that can be the standard bearer for North American Counter-Strike. Make American counter great again. Exactly. That's what I'm talking well, about. Well, not in right Alicia's professional lifetime, it won't be. <laughs> I think it could be. Maybe not even your daughter. Well, here's, here's Maybe here's, when he's 31 and in-game leading. Here's the biggest problem. Here's the biggest problem is is when you're... Because I've seen this in North American teams in the past. Every, everyone kind of has to a degree. The last the last like real team that we've seen like rise up out of nowhere out of North America was like NRG in like 2018, 2019. With Breeze. And Ethan. if you're if you're the teams like Complexity and Liquid, and this was an issue that, that we had um, that I that I felt in Liquid, although they did give Grim, Grim a little bit of or a chance kind of considering how that team worked um is you're not really these these top na teams aren't like willing to go down and risk like picking up a talent and training them up north american teams suck at bringing untested talent and training them up and you have to be able to do that and if you're complexity right now you're like okay maybe we want to make a roster change but who the fuck are we going to pick up not like, did that. exactly not like i made you do that but you've missed out on malves you've missed out on lake now 
you've had some chances to pick some of these guys up. And I'm saying that with a little bit of hindsight, to be fair. But you need to be able to go down and say, okay, this obviously isn't working. So we can either waste time right now trying to make this work when it obviously isn't going to. Or instead of wasting the time for the next six months, we can actually pick somebody up and spend the next six months training him up and then go into 2025. But hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, let's, let's, let's take a few steps back again. And obviously, from the broader perspective, I don't expect complexity to be a team winning titles. Okay, when I step back and I look at things. But... I'm giving the other teams the good graces of the fact that we are uh, just coming out of the break. So I feel like we should do the same with complexity. No, I don't. Why? I don't. They lost this to is, VP, this... which, you know, VP are now in the semifinals. Because this has been a problem all year. I think the problem okay. is just the, 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 the types of rounds that they're losing. 5v3s, 5v2s, 4v2s, just, just basic CS, you yeah. know, that they're fucking up where... It's miscommunication, lack of com communication, whatever it is. And that cannot happen for a lineup that's been together for a year. Like those problems need to be rooted out in a season. By the end of a season, if you have them, and if not, then you change the players who are the most responsible for it. Like you make some sort of a change because you cannot play good Counter-Strike with those problems. Yeah. You just cannot consistently, right? This has been a problem since like essentially they got to the finals in Sydney last well, year. Well, Leeds has been there for a year now. Yeah. yeah. So I look. I, I one of the rounds that Elige was visibly upset by was it was like a late round. They were going towards B. Grim gets one kill on a B main guy, and then he has to drop back to more of a passive line because he was potentially open to a lot of things, uh, connector as well as B main. And Elige rotates in. Now Grim, we were on his POV, was clearly aware that it was possible for the player to come in B main and go to jail. Elige comes in and he overextends out temple and he's open to jail and he dies and he freaks the fuck out. Now, the thing is, I'm assuming uh, this, I don't actually know, this might not be the scenario, but I'm assuming that Elijah's pissed because Grimm didn't tell him that it was possible for him to be on jail. But Grimm was the player under pressure calling for a rotation, knowing that they were main. When Elijah rotates in and he takes the first fight towards main and sees that there's nothing there, it's kind of his prerogative of how he's going to continue forward because Grimm's the guy under pressure who's yeah. been pushed back off of the line. That's telling me. And then like, there was another round as well where Elijah had rotated in. It was a late B here and Smoke comes down uh, CT perspective oh, yeah, he right just side it. and he just yoloed it. And I'm like, bro, that's on you. Like, You, you could have yeah. let Grim take first contact and then you could have That was tilt. Yeah, was exactly. Like... But a lot of these situations, you can sit there and you can... Because I, I, I agree with you. When I play with the shitters online at home, you know, I can get mad at them. I'm like, how many fucking times do I have to tell you to... You know, like, I, I get it. Like, I exactly. understand the frustration. Harry, you fucking muppet. <laughs> He's smashing your head against a brick wall time and time again. But at the same time, like, Elige definitely let those scenarios, like, be, have cloud his judgment. And as a class player, yeah. he's the one who's meant to make the difference. He is the superstar of the team. The rest of them are fucking nobody. But that's that's been his weakness as a player throughout his entire career. Well, there you go. That kind of stuff. And, I mean, look, every player has a weakness, and that's one thing that Elige has had to battle with. And and I have plenty of plenty of things I could talk about that I have that I didn't enjoy when I was in Liquid about Elige's, Elige's game and decision-making in certain scenarios. But he's a fucking badass of a player. Of course. Um yeah, and I think I think for him, I think that I think you guys just touched on the main thing. I think that that frustration has built up so much over the past six months to a year to where he is like more of his decisions are being. He's feeling like he has to do so much. Of course, he probably feels like he has to make plays every single round, or he has to be the one to to, to save a round or create an opportunity, and he's not getting to be as patient with picking his decisions and his fights that he wants. They and lost that game from a, that game from eleven five. Building frustration <laughs> higher and higher. Yeah. And then you go into a game playing, starting at 60% frustration. You know, like, it's just... They were up 7-1 on City side and Ubis, and then they lose a 5v2 and the half end 7-5. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, that's all you need to know yeah. about that. And it's happened way too often for complexity. I think the Mongols, I don't want to say it's like worrying signs, because... Uh, First event. Yeah, but also they did lose. They played Blast online, and they lost to Cat Evil. Oh, yeah. That did happen. And Jean <laughs> Copping wasn't great. No. So it's been a spree that's been a bit disappointing I, for them. I don't know if I'd say like worrying signs, but I guess the question we'd have to ask is like, have we found their ceiling? Well, yeah, that's the thing because we're talking about them being on route to being a, a contender team. Right. right? And, and that's and, the next conversation we've, we're starting to have. Yeah, and they might be plateauing right now. Yeah. But then the thing for them is when you're plugging those gaps with new players again, you have to go through getting those guys from zero experience to especially if you go back to pick up another Mongolian exactly well and that's what they would do <laughs> yeah right? like, exactly. I, don't know, I don't know how many <laughs> how many more you got out there how many boys? Europeans <laughs> can speak Mongolian true I mean, not many we got, we got it's it. not a widespread language let's but this say. roster has been together for about 10 months now since the addition of Senzu I think Senzu is really good like mechanically mm. I think he's really good um, some of their games 
you know, they also had a few stinkers of rounds that they lost. I think I think one thing I feel like I think they, they struggle with sometimes because we see them play like really smart Counter Strike, obviously, and be composed in a lot of situations. I think they struggle when I felt I felt like when I was watching them, when teams get like really like hyper aggressive and like a really faster pace, like their game against their game against M80, that was like a little bit scrappy. I feel like they lose some of that composure. I think they like descend to playing that scrappy style of Counter Strike. Uh, yeah, but I think that's okay. That's okay in a way to get drawn into that. I don't think because there's a lot of teams that try and cause chaos as 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 the go-to opener. It's just in that M80 game specifically, they had better reads on their CT side of kind of where M80 was going to be hitting. Like they were able to leave A open, whereas you look at the G2 Spirit game, and that was something that G2 was able to exploit against Spirit, right? And and that's I think the rolling of the dice of some of the calls in those maps. But I don't know, I. The thing, the thing is, the decision making on the Mongols is so high level. Like they are one of these teams, like VP, that pro understand that it's the team's responsibility to get the AWP and AWP. That's how I look at the Mongols as well. They're not as um, save heavy, of course, but they they think about the game on such like a good team level. I I don't know what they played before coming to this event, because one thing that I would let. FlyQuest or Greyhound off the hook with in the past is I don't think you see their necessary best level when they come to an event straight from Australia. And if the Mongols are coming straight from Mongolia, they're not going to be as on point individually as because they're sharp, right? People talk about how hard these guys can shoot, but if you're still coming from just playing Mongolian CS, you're not going to be as sharp as you would be if you were playing European. So I don't know if Mongols played in Europe before coming to this event. I'm not no. sure. So I think that I maybe I can make I'm making excuses for everybody today. Look how nice I am. Uh, <laughs> hey, you woke up in a good mood today. I've been getting plenty of sleep, Jason. I have not. <laughs> <laughs> so, fuck complexity. <laughs> uh, dear. And then tonight you go to the edge of the world. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think let's wait and see for Cologne, I think, to see if Mongols have played. Uh, pl because only six teams go to the playoffs of Cologne. So do we have Mongols as a team that we think should make the playoffs? <sighs> well, it's, no. I mean... On paper, no. But Are it will depend also team? if they they have to make it out of the play-in, which we... Right? Yeah, I, I don't so. know. Are they eight, eight, Would you consider them like an 8th to 10th type place team? So there's a chance that they could make the playoffs. Yeah. Like they should I be within a game of playoffs. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Challenging for playoffs. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And then it's going to be opponent dependent and you, do, you don't want to see a team like that get blown out in that type of a scenario, right? But where are they in playing? I'm having a look. Uh, they might or they might be yeah they are in playing okay complexity heroic nine z mongols eternal fire falcons liquid bet boom furia flyquest big mibr pain imperial saw and alternate attacks nine z is ranked eleventh on HLTV. yeah that's because they had a a good run oh, to yeah, the end Dallas. of the season right yeah. Um, Dallas. yeah yeah how long have we been going for oh uh, wow well, I gotta I was just about to say I got I gotta get going shortly I got media in thirty minutes and I gotta go shower. Yeah. What time is ours? Three? Three, I think. Three yeah, to three four. four. Jason's two to three. Jason, let us know what you do. Yeah. I'm doing the classic. Uh, it's never been done before, uh, this piece of content. You're being facetious. Uh, it's, uh, we're, going, uh, we're doing an entertaining segment about uh, famous casting lines. Oh, aren't we doing the no, same thing? No, we're doing the same thing. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Which I'll be like, you know, that picture where it's like three guys in uniform and then a clown. Because it's like you two and Alex, and then I'm doing it with Chad for some reason. So, <laughs> so like guys who actually cast it and have those lines, and me. Wait, so what? But what? Are, I don't what, have any what are we doing with it? Do you understand? Do I have no idea. I was just told it's an entertaining, entertaining format about caster lines. That's the information I have. Cool. About famous caster lines. Just tell us also if we need to wear like pants or are we on camera or? Sure. I, I think I, we'll be on camera. I think we'll be on camera. Yeah, I think so. No. <laughs> but like, I mean, from the waist up or full. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Standing or sitting. You know. yeah. I've been wearing trousers the whole time, other than in my room or the gym. I or right now. That. I've been, I've been wearing, I'm in my room. I've been wearing <laughs> gym shorts to the, to the studio every day. I'm just like, no. Wow. Yeah. It's so hot in that room, the castle. Well, room. that's what happens when the air conditioning exhaust fans go into the room. <laughs> is that what the problem is? I didn't even look at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was just like, you know what? We're in Saudi Arabia. I expect everything. We're to be putting out hot. cold air that is colder than the room, but also putting in hot air that's hotter than the room. Perfect. So okay. uh, we're, I was, <laughs> we're keeping I, it at the same temperature. I wore my button down the other, like the first day and I was just sweating in the room while casting. So it's been gym shorts and a t shirt since then. But we've only been on camera for due to the 30 second spurt. Yeah. So was, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's why I haven't minded. I'm yeah. just like, yep. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All, All right. right. I'm going to go do entertaining casting ones. Yeah. Have fun, Jason. I'll, I'll, Have fun, Jason. Bye, man. Thanks, guys.